with the same challenge I gave to to Dennis earlier about the Canes. I gave him about the Panthers also. Let's stop asking the easy questions. Let's stop asking the, is Deontay Johnson important questions. Let's start asking the hard ones. What are the hardest questions the Panthers are facing? And I'm going to do my best to answer the hard ones because we don't just do it easy. If it was easy, everyone would do it. If it ain't hard, it ain't worth it. Difficult. Dennis, what are the questions? Okay, this is going to be a Dave Canales question. All right, I can I can pretend I'm Dave Canales. If you feel like your offense overall is doing well in terms of your offensive line, receivers, everyone's getting it, but Bryce Young struggling. At what point in the season are you saying, "Hey, you know what? We're in games, but you're holding us back. We got to make a change." It, it's not just a point in the season. Mm-hmm. It also has to be a win loss record. Yeah. So we have to be above 500. Or flirting around 500. We, yeah, we'd have to be 5-4, and four, and he'd have to be playing really bad. That's that, Because here's the, here's the thing. There has to be enough time that making a change would actually change something, mm-hmm. right? Because it's unfair to Andy Dalton or whoever you go to if it's like week 14 and you're like, hey, turn the season around. Uh Let's so, say let's say week nine hits, you're three and five, and you're a game back in the or two games back in the division, and Bryce stinks. You making a switch? Because you're within striking distance. Probably not. No? No, because I think it's more important to the franchise as a whole to be definitive about Bryce Young. If you if you bench Bryce Young, you're Zach Wilsoning this kid. You're you're yeah. gonna take whatever you can get to send him to somewhere else in the offseason. And I don't think that's fair after the way he was treated last year. So I'm 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 definitive. So uh, he'd have to be playing like historically bad, right? It can't, it can't just be like oh you know he's uh, you know twelve touchdowns, nine interceptions. Like it has to be like twenty interceptions, ten touchdowns for for me to consider benching him. Uh, and and honestly, like they'd have to win some weird games. Because if you're losing games, it doesn't make sense to make a switch because what are you trying to protect? Uh, so you have to be winning games and him playing that poorly, which means you need, like, J.C. Horn with multiple touchdowns. You need Amir smith set returning kicks. The defense giving up, like, nine points a game. <laughs> like, you have to win games while he's playing hideous. Running for 200 yards a game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, Chuba Hubbard suddenly is, like, 1994 Emmett Smith. Like, you, you need – you need that specific thing to happen because if he's playing bad and you're losing, you're, you know, three and nine and he's playing bad. Well, who cares? Like, what are you protecting? Might as well play out the string. Uh, so it's going to take a lot for me to bench Bryce Young this year. All right, next one here. If Deontay Johnson proves himself to be a number one wide receiver for you this season, how much are you willing to pay? If you're Dan Morgan, the general manager, how much are you willing to pay per year for Deontay Johnson? And for how long? Ooh, see, here's the thing. My gut instinct when you asked the question was 25 per. Okay. I'm not sure. If he truly has like a number one season, if mm-hmm. he's 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns, 100 catches, I don't think that gets it done. And I think I, really? I, I think I, no, I mean, there's a lot of receivers that are 30 plus now, uh, million per. I don't think he goes that high, but 28. So here's here's my official stance on the subject. Yeah, um, like you're the GM. You just realize, hey, my I'm, quarterback has got a number I, one guy. I'm Dan Morgan, and I'm going to make you my Brant Tillis. Oh, okay. So you're the only. person. I'm pers- asking you the hard questions. No, no, no. I'm just okay. I'm telling you how I would play this out. <laughs> All right. Uh, because you're the only person I trust, right? And I I'm not even bringing like wide receiver coaches into this. I'm doing everything I can. I'm telling the agent. I'm telling my coaches. I'm telling every. I'm doing everything I can. I'm not going a dollar above twenty-five. When it's just me and you in a room, and I've swept it for bugs. There's no microphones. There's no anything. I'm going like. I think I'd probably go to twenty-seven if I have to, but I'm doing everything I possibly could to not let that happen. And it's probably like a, I don't know, like a four-year deal with essentially the first two guaranteed or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, just kind of a boilerplate structure. Four years, 100 mil. Four years, 107, something like that. 
uh, would be like what I would go to, but I wouldn't tell anybody until I absolutely have to. That's where like me and Brant Tillis would have to be, you know, bl- doing the whole like uh, pinky promise thing and don't tell anybody. Would a lot of it be contingent on how well Xavier Lee get is playing? Um, because if Lee get is showing, hey, that guy could be our number one right there, we could pay other spots on our team and let Deontay Johnson walk. Not ne- not necessarily be for this reason. Um. You're going to pick up in this scenario, right? If, if Deontay Johnson has that season, Bryce Young had a pretty good year. Uh, you're probably like you have, because this is going to be Bryce Young's second year, you're going to have three more years of him on a controlled contract, of Bryce on a controlled contract. I want to take advantage of those years by giving him multiple receivers, right? Uh, when Patrick Mahomes was young, he had Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. When Tua Tungo-Vailoa was young, he had Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. When Joe Burrow was young, he had Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. And then as when Josh Allen was young, he had Stephon Diggs. Like as the, these players get better and their money comes in, you have to start kind of paring away who can who you can surround them with. But if Xavier Leggett plays great and Deontay Johnson puts up numbers like we described, Xavier Leggett's on a rookie contract. He's not He's not becoming more expensive. I'm looking at Bryce Young and saying, we're going to have a great offense next year. I'm bringing back both. Um, so, so no, I'm willing to pay Deontay if he plays. Like, he's got to he's got to do the hard part first. He's got to go put up a bunch of cash or a bunch of uh, catches and yards first. Then we can talk about cash. All right, this is the final one for you. If J.C. Horn gets mm. hurt during the mm-hmm. season, what's your mm. option now at cornerback? We've already picked up his fifth-year option, right? Yeah. If he gets hurt during the season, what's your option? Oh, you're it? saying how do we replace him? Yes. What's okay, your I option? thought you were saying how do we treat J.C. Horn, of which I would say stop depending on him and anything you get from that point forward is a bonus, mm-hmm. but you're already locked in through five years, so do what you got to do. Um, talking during the season, J.C. Horn gets hurt. What's your option? It, it, let's say he goes on injured reserve. So, so it's you're going to miss him for six weeks. DiCaprio Boodle. I I, is, is, I mean the way that the way the roster is slotted now is Dane Jackson would become your number one. Uh, Troy Hill would probably be your number two corner, but when you do go to a nickel, Troy Hill would kick down inside and. The DiCaprio Boodles of the world would have to fight it out. Maybe the the rookie. Uh, um, Shaw Smith-Wade? Sh- yeah, Shaw. Maybe he he does something. If – see, I, like, I need to know how the next three weeks play out because if Stephon Gilmore and or uh, uh, Adoree Jackson are still available, I sign them off the street and I start them two days later. Uh, if they're not available, then I do look around on on the, the waiver the, – the, you know, at home list to see who's there. But uh, the way the roster would be constructed now, I think what I would do uh, if if J.C. Horn gets hurt again is cry. Like, I think that, <laughs> cry? I think that That's would the be, first that thing? Would be the, right. the number one thing would be shut my office, turn on loud music, and sob a little uh, because that would – that's they just. and by the way, corner's not the only position for the Panthers. They have a lot of positions where they simply do not have the depth to survive – uh, with any kind of confidence, a serious injury to one of your best players. Um, so yeah, I guess maybe the maybe if if JC Horn gets hurt like season ending early enough in the season, I start researching who I'm going to take with my top three pick next year. Like there's some of it's just out of your control.